All right, Trekkers and Trekkers, it's time for the second episode of the day, which is the Sword of Kalos. Dahar Master Kor, seated in Quarks, regaling a crowd with the story of the glorious battle between Kor, King, and Koloth's, Koloth, and the forces of Tanag. Almost the entire bar is gathered around the old Klingon, except Worf, who huddles uncomfortably nearby at the bar, quietly listening. When Kor finishes, Jesse Dex notices Worf sitting alone and invites him to meet her old friend. Worf declines, reminding her that he is considered an outcast by most Klingons, but she insists. Introduced by Dex anyway, Kor calls Worf a traitor and a pariah, the lowest of the low, followed by a long and comfortable pause, after which he smiles, extends his hand, and shows a visibly upset Worf that anyone so disliked at the highest levels of the Klingon Empire is a friend of his. Kor invites Worf on a mission to recover the Sword of Kalos, the mythical, millennial-old weapon of the Klingon Empire's legendary first leader, an artifact missing for centuries. A Vulcan geological survey team mining a cranium discovered, discovered evidence of the sword's presence without realizing its significance and gifted the, the shroud of the sword to Kor when he was ambassador to Vulcan. Dax, feeling the effects of all the blood wine she has consumed, decides to check that the shroud is genu genuine the following morning. She leaves to go to bed, while Kor and Worf continue drinking. When the drunken Kor finally turns to his quarters after first speaking with Worf, he is attacked by a Lithia named Soto, who reads his mind. The next day, Dax finds Kor pass out following the attack and assumes he is merely hungover. He obviously does remember his encounter with the Lithian, but does recount being thrown out of Quarks and spending some time in Worf's quarters drinking Iridium brandy Worf received for a special occasion. Turning to the cloth, Dax implies that she, that she has verified the, the authenticity of the shroud, particularly since it shows evidence of, of, of Rook DNA. Kor, becoming very excited, is ready to go, but she asks him where he got it first. Later, Captain Sisko is listening to an explanation of his quarters. Apparently, a Vulcan geological survey found it accidentally in ancient ruins on an uncharted planet in the Gamma Quadrant, and was been left by the Hork. Hoping to restore the Federation Klingon relations, Sisko allows them the use of the USS Rio Grande. On the way, Kor stops to make a speech clearly excited about the journey and feeling fortunate to be accompanied by Dax and Worf. The trip takes several hours, so Kor rests and Worf does some Mokbara exercise, pausing to thank Dax for introducing him to Kor. Kor has a fantastical dream of returning the sword in the Hall of Heroes to Gowron, where statues of King and Koloth come alive, reuniting with him. Soon, though, the team reaches the planet. Since the Vulcans had mapped out the ruins well, Kor knows where to, find, Kor knows where to look. An ancient area that was once the Horok Central Museum. However, there was a forest where the Dax needs to spend time on to break through. Beaming down, the set of forest field destabilizers. His successful create interference pattern and the field is gone. Upon arriving in a subterranean vault, very go and deserted chamber, find that all the artifacts hidden there have been removed. Uh oh. The three are very disappointed, but Worf, unwilling to give up, discovers another chamber. Hidden by holographic projection, and is a sensor which seemingly only emits Hork life signs. Using the Starfleet tricorder to fake them, they enter and finally find the Sword of Kalos. Worf, dumbstruck at seeing the actual sword in person, reaches out to hold it, lets Kor hold it first. <coughs> when, enter, when they exit the chamber, they are confronted by several Klingons led by Toral, son of Duras, who hired the Lethian to attack Kor and learn about their plans to recover the sword. Worf initially thinks that Toral wants to be the one to bring back the sword to restore the family seal in the High Council, which he lost a few years earlier. However, he says he can lead the Empire himself. Toral also challenges Worf, mentioning the fact that Worf spared his life. Though outnumbered, Kor, Worf, and Dex brought the way past Toral's group and escaped to the caves. Toral's ship is jamming their communications with the runabout, though. Worf suggests they try going to the surface, so Dex says Kor makes sure no one follows. After a while, Kor swore for advice to counter with Tural. When he was to collect the right of vengeance, he has sick thoughts about him, even calling him not a real Klingon. He blames him for their current predicament, and Worf turns that Kor earlier boasted about the mission in public, leading Tural to him. Worf goes onward, and Kor expresses his regret bringing him along to Dax. As they break through the caves, Kor increasingly Kor grow, 
Cor grows increasingly bombastic about plans for the sword and the empire when they return. Starving to kill a cook rat they find, Cor jokingly exaggerates their encounter with it. Worf is unamused, and further directs to Cor's use of the sword to hold the meat. Cor ridicules him, as this scale uses to skin the serpent of Zol. Pinching Worf is idealist, and scoffs the idea of giving the emperor the sword instead of Gowron. Expressed that it would require a true warrior to unite the Klingon people, not something like Gowron or even the reborn Emperor Kalos. Worf just really supposes Kor wants to take that role, and Kor says the Empire could do much worse. Dax tries to settle the conversation by moving the group along. Later, Worf decides that it's his destiny, not Kor's, to possess the sword and lead its people. While Kor gets more food, Worf explains the different meaning of, of his vision of Kalos when he was younger to Dax. Dax is kind of middle. It was appears that Kor has been listening from around the corner. The long journey takes the three of them to an abyss, where there is a ledge they can use to continue. Kor slips and loses footing, but still gripping the sword. Worf sees Kor by grabbing the other end. Straining, he tries to convince Kor to let go and land on the ledge below, but Kor refuses, believing Worf is deceiving him. Dax pulls up Kor and they both look down, seeing the ledge, which is dangerously small. Kor then confronts Worf, seeing a try to kill him. He demands the sword, but Worf instead raises it against him, and they almost start fighting. Dax holds onto the sword herself as if they're too squabble over it. Later, they stop to take a break. Kor and Worf continue to pick up while Dax observes and tries to stop it. She holds the sword and, e and fades her even as she sleeps. Dax is awakened by the sound of Worf and Kor, ready to fight to the death. They enter when Tyrell's party catches up to the tree and begins another battle. Kor the Gossip takes the sword and engages them. Worf is coming in him as he has the sword and joins him. They soon subdue the whole group. However, Worf and Kor turn on each other, and Worf is on the verge of killing Kor when Dax sends each of them with their phaser. Strange to forces him to deactivate the jamming signal, and then transports the three of them back to the runabout. Later on board, Worf and Kor realize that the sword turned the two of them against each other and will probably divide the Klingon people as well. Worf ponders that they were really meant to find it. Kor firmly asserts that it was so. Sally notes that they were not they were just not meant to keep it. They make the decision to beam the sword into space, leaving it to destiny to decide when it should be revealed to the Klingon people. Aww, that's sad. So anyway, let's take a look at some trivia surrounding this episode. Toral was last seen in the Star Trek Next Generation episode Redemption Part 2, and was created by J.D. Cullum. The heroic girl also mentioned in the Star Trek Enterprise episode Affliction. Worf makes a reference to Kor's battle with Kirk on Organia, a reference to the original series episode Aaron of Mercy, where Kor made his first appearance. Harold Lofton, who plays Jake Sisko, does not appear in this episode. So, I, I really do like this episode, and it is kind of upset, it's kind of sad that they had to beam the Sword of Kalos into space, but hey, you know, I think it was all for the best, so yeah. So overall, I give the Sword of Kalos four warp cores out of five. By the way, tune to bed as we took the final episode of the day, Our Man Bashir. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.